So hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to quickly talk about the NRF 24L01 radio and uh, some of the problems that a lot of people have with these and uh, some tips on how to improve your perf the performance you get and the reliability of the radios. So this is the NRF uh, radio. It's a very popular unit. It's extremely cheap and uh, it has a high data rate and um, automatic uh, CRC and things like that. So it, it it's quite a you know popular uh, uh, electronic uh, component that people want to add to their to their projects but uh, a lot of people have problems with the wiring and the reliability of the communications and things like that because there's you know there's no lights or anything on this so you really don't know if it's working if it's not working why is the data transmission not going through and things like that so i just want to make a quick video on a few tips that i've uh, i've learned uh, and i'd like to share them with you how to make these more reliable all right, so the first thing is you know, these run at 3.3 .3 volts DC and uh, they need an extremely steady uh, power supply. You know, you can't have any voltage fluctuations at all in that uh, DC supply, 3.3 .3 volts. Now, that's okay if you're running it from a battery, but if you're running it from some kind of AC, uh, you know, uh, power source plugged into the wall or a computer or something like that, and uh, there is some AC component in the supply that comes to this that uh, reduces the the reliability of the chip so uh, here's the here's the pinout on the NRF chip and you can see I've soldered a capacitor this is a very common solution that a lot of people recommend on the internet and I uh, I support that so here's a capacitor this is a 10 microfarad capacitor and it's soldered between the ground and the VCC pins this is the ground pin and so the negative side of the capacitor comes on the ground pin and the positive side of the capacitor comes on the VCC so the 3.3 .3 volts and what this capacitor does is it drains away all that uh, you know stray alternating current signal that could be there in your power supply so that improves performance the second thing is which I and I had a lot of problem with this when I actually started off with these chips and so if you look at the pinout diagram on the internet you know all the all the di all the diagrams they always show you the pinout from looking from the top view like this from here but when you actually end up connecting the wires you got to flip it around and do it this way and so this these pins are now kind of like a mirror image of what's on the other side so it's very confusing and uh, many times i've connected the wrong wire to the wrong pin and you know led to a lot of frustration and things like that so you got to be connect the correct wire to the correct pin and to help with that you could get yourself one of these and so what this is is if I can just get it into focus just give me a second alright there we are so this is a breakout board for the NRF chip they're very cheap and they're very very useful so all you got to do here is just plug the NRF board into this breakout all right and once you have it like that you have all the pins in one straight neat line over here okay so you can see that these pins over here and they're easily accessible and labeled so um, you know there's 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 very um, less chance of you actually putting a, a wire on the wrong pin and connecting it to the wrong pin on the microcontroller so this helps a lot this breakout board the other advantage of this breakout board is if you look on this side there's two other pins here so this takes actually a 5 volt input and converts that with this IC into 3.3 .3 volts for the NRF chip so you can just use now 5 volts you don't have to worry about 3.3 .3 volts from the coming from your microcontroller you can just plug it in plug a 5 volt directly in here and this NRF will receive 3.3 .3 volts via this step down uh, IC so that just makes the whole thing easier to use but at the same time you got to keep in mind that uh, whatever my whatever source you're using for this 5 volts or for that matter this 3.3 .3 volts you got to make sure that they have the current capacity to supply this chip so in the case of this small NRF it's fine you know um, a microcontroller also should be able to provide the current needs for this I think it's 8 milliampers or something but if you were to change over then to one of these 
and this is the is the larger version of the NRF chip with a power amplifier and a, a low noise amplifier so with with a with a aerial also so if you um, decide to use one of these in your project you know you can't power it directly from the microcontroller you have to give it an external power supply and so that's where something like this uh, breakout board comes in useful because this chip this IC is able to provide that high current which uh, the NRF needs the other thing is so that's about this breakout board the third tip is to use one of these now this actually converts 12 volt DC into two supplies so one is 5.5 volts on this oops sorry yeah 5.5 volts on this side of the rail so this side is 5.5 volts and the other side provides 3.3 volts so this is a steady supply which is have high enough capacity to provide the NRF with what it needs in the form of a steady uh, electrical supply at 3.3 volts so most of the time the electrical issues of the NRF and its reliability um, come from the fact that it needs a very very steady supply so if you use any of these three techniques so you either get yourself an external power board like this one that can supply the 3.3 volts that the NRF needs or get yourself one of these which is the breakout board so the wiring becomes easier and you don't have to worry about 3.3 volts um, you know from from the microcontroller and the third thing you could do is well the first thing actually which you should do is put one of these capacitors between your ground and the VCC pin so these are three little hardware tricks you can use to, Im to improve the performance of your uh, NRF radios and uh, so what I'd like to do now is I'll just talk about some software tips that should also uh, really boost your performance so let's open up the Arduino IDE and have a look okay so here we are inside the Arduino IDE um, and this is just a very very basic sketch uh, using the NRF chip that I've uh, I've just written out um, just to demonstrate you know some of the some of the the features are of the of the library the RF24 library that I use to help me with my to improve my uh, communication reliability using these chips okay so first we create obviously we create the radio uh, then we write out we define the writing pipe through which the radios will communicate okay now I'm going to be sending floating point data through my radio all right and uh, so it's going to be three uh, you know it's going to be an array with a size of three so I'm going to send three floating point numbers okay now in my setup so obviously you have to you know begin the radio right and All right, there we go right then we open the writing pipe now this is interesting so normally you would just have this okay and what this would do is it would send every time you wrote to the radio using oh, oh hang on let me just delete this all right so supposing you wrote to the radio using this TX radio dot write command here okay so the data would just write to the radio and maybe it would be received maybe it wouldn't you wouldn't really come to know so for that what I've done is I you can set the number of retries on the radio all right so what this radio does is this the first argument to this function set retries tells you what should be the time interval between two retries so I've asked for a time interval of 15 and each of these 15 is actually 250 microseconds so if if this argument was suppose 1 then the radio would retry 15 times whenever it came to this write function whenever the radio operate uh, you know uh, executed this write operation it would write a total number of 15 times and between each of these 15 attempts there would be a time gap of one so each one of these is 250 microseconds all right so 
supposing I wanted to set the number of retries to say 10 retries per write operation and I wanted a thousand microseconds gap between each of these 10 retries I would put 4 here because each of these is 250 microseconds so 250 microseconds multiplied by 4 would give me 1000 microseconds so between each of these 10 retries every write operation would consist of 10 retries in case the acknowledgement was not received and each of these 10 retries would take place at a gap of 1000 microseconds so that's how you use the retry functionality of this of this library to ensure that your radios give you a better performance so let me do this again so 15 would mean 4000 microseconds between retries and I want a total of 15 retries these are the maximum that these arguments can hold the maximum value so 4000 microsecond gap between retries and a total of 15 retries so that's quite useful actually and if you think about it if you do 15 multiplied by 4000 microseconds that, that actually takes, takes up a total of, of 0 0.06 seconds of time so, so this whole retry process assuming that all 14 of them fail you know and the last one succeeds it will take 0 0.06 seconds all right for this entire thing so that actually means that in one second you could transmit about 16 packets and you'd still have some time left over so you could you could actually transmit at 16 Hertz and you know you'd still be able to allow for all the retries to take place so this is def this definitely improves reliability and I highly recommend it all right the next thing you could do is you could set the uh, power amplitude level that's the the power at which the radio actually is making its transmission so you do that by this function uh, method here and uh, so you can set it to high low or medium depending on on your, on your requirement so I, I always I, I set it to high because I've got a good power supply unit which is able to provide me the power and uh, so uh, this helps you know obviously increasing the transmission power means your reliability increases so these are the two um, software techniques that you can use one is the number of retries and the other is to increase the power and the third thing is actually when you write the data so here you see this you write the data using this function when you actually transmit the data this function returns a boolean value and that boolean value is either true or false depending on whether this write function actually happened correctly and it got a correct acknowledgement or not so you can capture this boolean value all right depending on whether this um, write operation happened properly you can capture the boolean value and then do something with it so in case this returns false it means that this operation did not succeed and it didn't succeed all 15 times so if you get a false here at this value it means that all the retries failed so perhaps you could do something else with this you know if 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 you get a false value here so for instance i'm just giving you an example here so supposing you wrote you know in your in your in your code uh, something like this if uh, radio ac okay is equal to false so this radio transmission didn't go to could didn't go through so you know maybe you need to do something maybe increase uh, increase your power level i don't know uh, you could increase um, output power level or maybe you know you had you you need to do something in your in your, with your with your project to ensure that next time it didn't happen perhaps if you had if you were transmitting very slowly you could actually do something you know and and you were certain that eventually the transmission would go through so you could you could even do this while radio ac okay uh, is not equal to true right and then you just keep transmitting so you know 
like this so and this so this is i wouldn't advise this but i'm just as an example i'm telling you you could keep transmitting theoretically you could keep transmitting until you got a proper acknowledgement so these are just some techniques uh, so there's three techniques here in the software one is the use of this boolean variable one is uh, to set the power level and the third is to set the retries so you could use software or you could use the three hardware techniques i told you earlier one was the capacitor the second one was the use of a breakout board and the third one is the use of a good power supply and uh, you should see a marked improvement in the reliability of your nrf radios uh, I've, I've i use these techniques now very regularly and uh, they're working out good for me so uh, thank you for watching and uh, i hope uh, this video has been of use to you thank you